Okay, now we're going to introduce uh, carbohydrates. And there are two subclasses. Carbohydrates encompasses many of these compounds. Sugars are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones, and starches are compounds that are um, multiple of these subunits linked together and can be hydrolyzed to produce them. The simplest carbohydrates are called monosaccharides, two of which are depicted here, glucose, which you should become familiar with its structure, as well as fructose. Notice that glucose is an aldehyde, has an aldehyde head, and fructose is a ketone, both six carbon sugars. Disaccharides are composed of two monosaccharides that are joined together. Lactose is shown here. And that, of course, is the sugar or disaccharide found in milk, very common. Um, and we'll take a look at that, at that closer. There are two others that we'll look at as well. Polysaccharides, poly meaning many, are composed of three or more monosaccharide units joined together, and we'll look at several of those as well. So carbohydrates are very important to not only plants, but animals. They're generated or synthesized by green plants during the process of photosynthesis and utilize energy from the sun that is then converted or stored as chemical energy in the bonds of these carbohydrates. In the body or mammals, they're used for bursts of energy that we need during exercise um, or fight, fight or flight um, and also just basic uh, metabolic needs. And we extract most of that energy from the glucose molecule. This is the reaction for photosynthesis in the forward direction where plants utilize carbon dioxide from the atmosphere along with water, sunlight for energy, and chlorophyll, of course, to produce that carbohydrate glucose molecule, plus release molecular oxygen, which is also something we are very dependent upon. We or other animals consume or ingest glucose, which is then metabolized and energy is extracted from those chemical bonds in that process. We'll look at that later. And we res um, respire carbon dioxide into the air and also produce water as a result of that uh, breakdown of the glucose molecule. Monosaccharides, again, the simplest carbohydrates, generally have three to six carbon atoms. And these are in a chain with either an aldehyde or a ketone um, and many hydroxyl groups along the, the car carbon chain. The carbonyl at C1, of course, is an aldehyde, and a term for that, uh, describing that, is aldose. If we have a carbonyl at C2, then we have a ketone, and that is referred to as a ketose. So aldehyde monosaccharides are aldoses, that al from the aldehyde, and ketone monosaccharides are ketoses, and ket, of course, from the ketone. And you should be able to classify a given structure as either being an aldose or a ketose. The simplest aldose is glyceraldehyde. And the simplest ketose is dihydroxyacetone, two very important biological molecules that we'll also see in the glycolytic pathway or glycolysis, which is a 10 reaction pathway that utilizes or extracts the energy from those bonds in the carbohydrates. 
if we were to add up the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in these two molecules, we would find they have the same molecular formula. So that means they are isomers of one another. The difference being, of course, is the functional group, um, which designates it either as an aldehy or aldehyde or ketone, aldose or ketos. We can also classify monosaccharides by the number of carbon atoms in its chain. If it has three carbon atoms, tri, meaning three, it's a trios. So you should recall that you learned these um, prefixes when you learn to name um, organic compounds. If we have four carbons, tetra, becomes tetros, five carbons, penta, pentose, six carbons, hexa, or hexose. Remember, we drop that A if the next um, letter in the name is a vowel. So we can combine those words to give more meaning or understanding of the number of carbons and the type of uh, head group or functional group that's present. If we have glyceraldehyde, which has three carbons, we have an aldotriose. In dihydroxyacetone, which is a ketone, we have ketotriose, also three carbons. So monosaccharides are sweet but their sweetness varies depending upon what uh, monosaccharide it is. They are polar compounds. They have high melting points. Um, if any of you have melted sugar, you know that it takes quite a bit of heat to accomplish that. And because there are so many polar functional groups that are capable of hydrogen bonding, that makes these monosaccharides very water soluble, easy to dissolve. Another feature or characteristic of carbohydrates is that they have one or more chiral centers. So what does chirality mean or a chiral center? That means we have, in this case, a carbon atom bonded to four different groups. Sorry, I don't write very well with a mouse. Um, but doing my best here. Okay, so four different groups bonded to this carbon atom. Because there are chiral centers, Glyceraldehyde, the simplest aldose, has two possible enantiomers. So remember, enantiomers are mirror images of one another. Okay, so here's my chiral carbon, or glyceraldehyde's chiral carbon, and it is bonded to this aldehyde group, a single hydrogen, a hydroxyl group, and then this. Um, alcohol group on the bottom. Mirror reflects our mirror image and notice that the hydroxyl groups are on different sides of that carbon atom. If it's on the right, it's a D conformation. If it's on the left, it's an L conformation. So as I just said, prefix D is going to be used when the hydroxyl group is on the right side. L, the hydroxyl group, is on the left side. Another way we can draw these structures is called a Fischer projection. And what happens here is the carbons in the chain are assumed to be at this juncture. Okay and are not actually drawn as in this structure. 
glucose, a six carbon sugar, has four chiral centers. And we can see um, drawn here on the left, the hydroxyl group in this glucose is on the right. Therefore, it will be a D-glucose. And this is the Fischer projection. So all the carbons in this internal part of the chain are not drawn. And you should be able to draw um, carbohydrate structures this way. So how do we determine the, gyro, um, the configuration, what, whether it's D or L? And that depends upon the chiral center that's farthest from the carbonyl group. So the carbonyl group in this D sugar is down here. Um, so this is the furthest chiral center away and that hydroxyl is on the right. In this um, one, it's on the left. So it is an L sugar. And you need to be able to distinguish between D and L conformations. It is important to note that all naturally occur occurring sugars are D sugars. So it is D glucose that we metabolize for energy. Um, so this is the naturally occurring enantiomer and this is the unnatural enantiomer.